In the summer of 1863, Confederate General Robert E. Lee determined that the only way to end the war between the states was to cross the Potomac River from Virginia into Union-controlled territory and wage an offensive war on Union soil. If he could inflict a major blow on Union forces, President Lincoln and the United States would be forced to accept peace with the Confederacy. Lee moved his army north through June and would eventually collide with the Union Army under its new commander, George Meade, at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania on July 1st. 95,000 Union troops and 75,000 Confederates went head to head for two days. Battle lines ebbed and flowed, but neither side dislodged the other. On July 3rd, Lee determined that his army could not sustain battle indefinitely and would need to either knock out the Union forces or retreat. Ignoring his usual defensive-minded strategies successfully undertaken in past conflicts, Lee set his sights on breaking the Union center with a final climactic direct assault at Cemetery Ridge. The majority of forces he chose to use were from General George Pickett's division under James Longstreet's Corps. Pickett's Virginians had been held in reserve throughout the fight, so his troops were fresh for the challenge. After a long Confederate artillery bombardment, 12,500 Confederate soldiers stretched over one mile marched through the open field. The Confederates encountered heavy artillery fire while advancing nearly three quarters of a mile across open fields to reach the Union line. All along the way, they were slowed by sloping terrains and fences in their path. By the time they reached the Union line on Cemetery Ridge, the attack had been broken into many small units, and they were being torn to pieces by Union infantry and artillery fire. Despite the onslaught, the Confederates continued to advance towards two gaps in the Union line. At first, some units of the Union Army retreated, and it looked as though the attack would succeed as Louis Armistead's brigade breached the stone wall. His troops poured into the Union lines, with Armistead waving his hat on a sword, leading the charge. Then he was struck down by enemy fire. As Union reinforcements arrived and charged into the breach, the Confederates cracked. With no officers remaining to rally the troops or to even call for a retreat, the weary soldiers began to slip away individually. The attack had failed, and the Battle of Gettysburg was effectively over. On July 4th, Lee began to withdraw his forces to Virginia. The casualties for both armies was staggering. Lee lost 28,000 of his 75,000 soldiers, and the Union losses stood at over 22,000. This would be the last time Lee threatened Northern Territory. Gettysburg could never have been forgotten, but its place in American memory was enhanced when President Abraham Lincoln visited the site of the battlefield four months later in November 1863 and delivered his Gettysburg Address for the dedication of the National Cemetery. Little known fact, on July 3rd, the Confederacy reached its symbolic high-water mark as Lee launched Pickett's Charge. 5,000 South Carolinians watched from the sidelines as North Carolinians, Virginians, and other Southerners moved forward against the Union Center. On that day, only one South Carolinian was part of the battle. First Corps Commander General James Longstreet was born in Edgefield, South Carolina, making him the only South Carolinian to participate in the attack. And now we know... And knowing is half the battle.